The disposal of plastic waste is a highly visible global problem from the highest mountains to the deepest ocean trenches. Plastic waste seems to be inescapable and even in natural conditions, it seems to be indestructible. But today in the hour, people release plastic waste into the system on a very large scale. This has led to a consensus of people believing that plastics are not sustainable materials. Yes, they may be a problem, an enormous one indeed, but do they necessarily have to be? Well, Nelson Boateng thinks otherwise because he's turning plastic waste into sustainable buildings. Let's meet him. Mr. Nelson, I'm really mesmerized by your activities because it looks like you're killing, um, you're using one stone to kill two birds in the sense that you are solving Ghana's sanitation problem and also giving accommodation to people. How did the story even begin? Okay, so, um, no plus started by recycling plastic waste, that's the pure sachet, only pelletize them and sell it to those into polybag manufacturing. But that very year, that's 2013, we brought in our own polybag manufacturing, uh, a polybag machine to produce the polybag ourselves. But 2015, 2016, where the government was putting threat on polybag manufacturing companies, we, that they are going to ban the, the polybag manufacturing uh, bags. We decided that we have to look or tend to a business that is more sustainable. A business that we will not hear our names on the, on the radio that uh, we are big contributors of this cause. That's polluting the environment. It costs flood and other things. So that's how come we started with the plastic recycling by turning all kinds of plastic. Now it's not poly, uh, pure sachet, but all kinds of plastic waste into building materials like the paving block, Lego bricks, etc. So then um, you started with um, the making of manufacturing of plastic itself and you're selling to the pu general public, but then because of threats of probably a shutdown, maybe because the government is staying on um, limiting the usage or, or controlling the, the plastic waste in Ghana, you decided to have a paradigm shift into what you are doing now? Yes. And, 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 and also, like, we, we feel bad any time they mention plastic is causing uh, pollution in the environment, also causing flood. Living things are dying when they eat them, like the fish, the, uh, what's the name, the goat and other animals, they eat them and they, and they get choked and die. So we also feel bad that we are a big contributor to this problem. Okay. Exactly. You're, you're feeling bad, you're a big contributor to pollution, but... How did this story even start? What was the inspiration? Uh, what, uh, looking at uh, plastic being a problem, a global issue, and the fact that uh, uh, people have uh, this perception about plastic, that plastic is bad, let's ban it. Meanwhile, we are not thinking about what, the, uh, what we did to come by this problem. We have pro plastic problem. We also have housing problem. We have school problem. For us, because we've been in the industry for a very long time, we know what plastic can do. We have to put in research together and come up with a, a, a product that will go out not to police, but also to solve another problem. That's the paving block and the Lego bridge that we use in building houses. That is how come we introduce that. So did you formally train for this? Uh, I've been in the plastic industry for a very long time. At the age of 30, I started working already. So I have this experience in plastic recycling the three days. Okay, so how's the reception been so far, especially when you had to quit doing plastic and to going after plastic to do what you're doing now? Um, the journey is very tough. Yeah, it's, 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 it's very, very tough. Like, you are into manufacturing of polybag, which brings in money more. Now, in Ghana, we don't really cherish green businesses. So that the banks, when, when you go in as a new uh, company, they want to see your financials for three years before they can even assist you. So the journey is tough. I, I, I wouldn't say it's, it's easy. It's very tough. So, and also being in the plastic business for a long period of time, as you said, th um, for 13 years, how easy has it been for you to even source your raw materials for your production? We have over 300 collectors. 
and they have the capacity to take about 20,000 kilos of plastic waste from the environment. But the problem here is us. We can't recycle all of them. That is the problem. Yeah, yeah. Because when, when they get the 20,000, we can only do 3,000 kilos daily. The rest, we have to tell them to take it back or we stop them for months from bringing the plastic waste. I'm just curious, so do you just go about looking for plastics and, and to pick them up and come and treat them and turn them into what you use them for? The collectors bring them, okay. If, if it's just sand, we can use them because we, we need sand in our product to make it fire resistance. If there are food debris or other foreign materials apart from the sand, we need to wash them out before we process them to the product. And um, before we came, we went to your, your, your plants, your company where things run, and we saw um, a lot of um, plastic waste. I don't know if I, I'm, I'm right to call them yeah, plastic yeah, waste yeah. being um, there. Are we, are we, one thing that I'm also glad about when people start doing their own business is um, the fact that they're also helping other people have jobs. Are you able to touch on that for us? Uh, like I said earlier on, we have created jobs over 300, that's the waste the, the pickers. And then direct, first we are 63 direct workers employed. Yeah. So let's just dovetail into how your production is done. Are you able to give us, walk us through how your production is done? So the collected plastics being brought to the factory, we crush them and wash them if necessary. Then we semi dry them. We mix 30% of the plastic with 70% sand. Then, if, uh, if, if the customer requires colors, then we put the, the pigment in. That's the colors we call them pigment. We mix them together, then we feed them to the sugar. It will pass through three heating zones. Then, the final product will, will come out as paste like form. It will be scaled for us to have a uniform tile size. Then, put in a mold with a cooling system. Then, we press it under hydraulic press. It takes about 30 seconds to one minute to eject one product, depending on the size and the, and the thickness. Okay. So on, on a regular day, how many are you able to produce? In full capacity, we should be doing 800 to 1,500, depending on the size. Okay. It depends on the size of bricks that we are producing. Okay. So then it's just bricks you are making? Bricks. Okay. Bricks, yes. Are you able to also talk about the cost? I'm sure people are watching then they would, they would want to even know how much these things cost. Especially when you're using plastic, they may want to compare how much it will cost using plastic and then the other alternatives that we have. Our products are over 30% cheaper than the concrete or traditional uh, building material that we have. Like this house, it will be sold for 60,000 Ghana cities. Yeah. So with price-wise, plastic products are cheaper and stronger. Not because the price is low, means the product is inferior it's very strong we have we had the test the strength test from gsa and Ghana, uh, Ghana area authority which proves that the product is stronger than the normal concrete building that we have according to research plastic takes over 500 years to start degrading so is the product because the product is just made up of plastic and sand and sand is thousand years forever but the plastic will take 500 years to start degrading. So is the product. Now, when we talk about earthquake and what, what, what will happen to the bricks, every rigid wall, like the concrete walls that we have, is very stiff, right, rigid. When there's a crack, well, uh, when there's a shake under the earth, sometimes we can't feel it, it will crack. We will see cracks on the wall because it's very rigid. These bricks are laid without cement. They have the ability to expand and contract when there's shakes from the earth. So these bricks that we are seeing here, they will need be crack. Water or salt doesn't have effect on it. It will reduce your yearly maintenance. And it's very durable. It lasts for a lifetime. So we live in a country that a lot of us are used to concrete, probably cement and things like that. And this, since this is somewhat new, there may be certain fears. Talk about durability, talk about is it being able to withstand certain weather conditions in the country, especially heat and plastic. How different is um, plastic for building 
from the other alternatives that we already enjoy. Okay, so um, the product is not made up of 100% plastics. It's just 30% plastic and 70% sand. The sand serves as a fire retardant, they put that. Like the way people are thinking is plastic. When there's fire, what will happen? It will cut flames. No, it will burn very, very slow as our traditional concrete block because the sand content is more. Second, when we talk about heat, the bricks are designed in such a way that there's a groove in between, like in, in, the, in, the, in, in the middle of the brick, that will not allow the heat from outside to penetrate and also maintain the temperature of the inner part of the brick. That's the inside where we are now. And it's been stuffed with fiber. And the finishing is made up of POP. We all know POP cement prevent cannot burn. So it's two in one. So this product wouldn't burn as to what people are thinking or the perception people have over plastic when there's fire. Okay. Yeah. So really then this home is made up out of? It's made up of 13,400 kilos of plastic waste. From our gutters and beaches. From our gutters and beaches. Yeah. Okay. Very impressive. So and then I believe you are into mass scale production now. What are some of the, the the reactions that you get from your patrons? Um, they like the product not because it's cheaper, but because of the durability. Okay. Yeah, that is the feedback we're having from them. Okay. Not because the price is cheap, that's why they are running for it. Because it's stronger. It's a product that when you buy or when you purchase, you are saving the environment. Because the more you, you purchase, the more I need to get the workers to get the plastic from the environment and produce more. So then simply put, you just make the bricks and then you sell to people who want to make buildings and that's it. So you don't make the, the homes or the house or, or it's, it's, it's a package that if another person, someone wants to, you offer? Yes. For now, when you have your land, we will come and build for you. They will charge you according to the size of the room. Yes, according to because some want it to be some want their rooms to be bigger with every room WC installed. So it depends the size that you bring to us. Well, interesting is getting um I, I saw a couple of videos and now I am here with a man telling me what's really the deal is. We are going to go for a quick break and when we are back we'll explore some more. Hi, my name is Nanama McBrown. I'm proud to be part of Ghana Web Road Safety Campaign. Please do the right thing. Save a life. Brim. Welcome back from that short break, and we're still here with Mr. Nelson Boatin, the owner of Neil Plus Ghana. Mr. Nelson, I'm, I'm curious, how has patronage been in terms of, um, um, let me just put it this way, where are you getting your patrons from? Is it all local? Do we have people international wanting to patronize your, 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 your product? Okay, so for now, we, 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 we have our customers locally, none of them are from outside. Okay. And then um, I was reading your bio and it looks like you've chugged a lot of successes and then it has come with a lot of awards. Are you able to work us through some of them? Uh, the first award that we had is from Guba, that's Ghana UK based achievement. We also have one from um, Green Environment. So many of them. Okay. Yeah, we, we, have, we have so many awards. Okay. Because I'm asking all these questions because sometimes, you know, you may have a very good idea and all these things catapult you to letting people know you but let's talk about capital how easy has it been for you to even access it for you to expand it's very difficult like i said in in our in, in my early explanations green businesses in ghana are suffering if you want to go green then you really need to prepare yourself that this is what i'm going to face because the honest truth is it's not easy to go green in Ghana because of this support is not enough to scale you where you want to be. So then how did you do it? Uh, perseverance. I can't give up where, where I've reached. I can't go back again okay. that I want to start another plastic. Uh, I, 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 I have worked in the plastic industry for a very long time. At the age of 13, what I know is plastics and I love it. And, and that's what I want to do to save the environment. 
So then you it's out of personal s- um, fans or probably donor support, um, family support. That's that's the kind of question I'm asking. Okay, so I have family support. I have some little grants. Like I said, but the grants will not is not pushing us where we want to be, what we want to achieve. We want the ordinary Ghanaians to also own a house. And that requires a very huge sum of funds to be pumped in. Yeah, so. What's, what's your comment on Ghana's um, housing deficit? That it, it looks like you are, you are in a way helping us to close the gap. What's, what's your comment on it? Like, um, what, 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 what I've seen is we have a problem called plastics pollution in Ghana. We have a problem, schools under trees. We have a problem, housing deficit. We have a problem of unemployment. We can use one of them, that's the plastic waste, to solve the other three problems that we have. The plastic that is giving us problem can solve another problem. So what I, I would say is, if the government wants to fight plastics, this is the way to go. By adopting this technology, at least some of the paving contracts that they have, they can give it cheap in nail plastic to do the work with. Because the more we have these projects, the more the plastic from our environment will be disappearing to our, or we will be turning to another product that, that, that will not, wouldn't go out to pollute again. We will have unemployment reduced. Our housing deficit will be, will be reduced. Schools and the, and the trees will be eliminated. So that is what uh, I believe if the government take a second look at, it will really help the country. Have you got any words for other entrepreneurs who may be watching you and then maybe taking inspiration from your, your feet so far? What I would say is, if you really want something, even if, even if, it, even if it will kill you, uh, as long as it's, it will benefit humanity, you should do it. Because heavens, I believe, once you are thinking about humanity, heavens will be on your side and you, and you will achieve your goal. Before I go, why do you think plastic is the future? I mean, people, currently people, we are saying it as, as a big problem, but why do you think that, well, we can take, and uh, we can redirect our thoughts to believing that it's, it's the future. Why do you think so? What I would say is, the plastic is not a problem. We are the problem. Because people have the perception that plastic is polluting the environment. Ask yourself, the plastic, they never fly from the factory or stores to the street or the beaches or the drainage. We carry them there. Our attitude is what we need to work on. People say, let's replace plastic with paper. Do you know the number of trees that will be cut if we are to go in for paper? And even the process of producing a paper, the, 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 the water you waste, if the paper got rotten on the ground, the poisonous uh, chemical that is being released to the earth, you have no idea. If we change to paper, because we have the same attitude in us, that attitude will be transferred to the paper. So what we need to change is our attitude of disposal. That is what I can say. Right. Mr. Nelson, thank you for, so much for cool. talking to us. Well, I am very much enlightened about um, how plastics are actually being transformed into greater stuff that um, now it's been, even been transformed to concrete materials that we used to build and in a way also helping us reduce our housing deficits in the country. My name is Desmond from Pond and thank you so much for watching.